Our iPhones do not come with a manual, but believe it or not, there's a lot of things that many people don't even know about they could do with an iPhone. As an example, did you know on the Measure app, you can actually use this to check somebody's height. So you can really see who's bluffing and who's telling the honest truth. And then if you like to scan a document, ditch the Note app scan document ability and don't bother taking a picture with the camera app, launch the built-in native folder app. In here, tap the three icons on the top right corner and you'll find a scan document feature. And regardless on the position the document is placed, this will automatically scan it. And if you need to go back and re-edit it, you have that capability to do, to do that during posts. And you'll find the results to be really good. But a feature that can't be found on the camera app was something that was silently added and that is a built-in leveler. This way you could always take the photos right as you shot it instead of having to crop it and edit it to make it all lined up properly. You'll find this level tool located in the camera setting in your iPhone settings. Now Shazam a while ago was bought by Apple. They have some weird partnership. I believe they got bought out. Correct me in the comment section, but it is native to your iPhone. And when you add Shazam to control center, here you have the capability to always have Shazam availability where it will automatically listen to whatever music is playing as well as keep track of it so you could add it later to your own personal music library. But did you know when you're browsing through social media platforms like TikTok or Instagram, launch the Shazam app and it will immediately identify the song right there, all built in natively. So FaceTime gestures was something that was secretly added. Well, Apple did talk about it, but they didn't really go through the entire list. Here I have the entire list on the screen. So next time, Whenever you do peace signs, you'll get cool animations from the front and rear and just looks really cool and makes having conversations with your friends very enjoyable, especially if you know what you're doing. So the offline maps, I hopefully we all are already familiar with it, but there's a feature that a lot of people overlook and that is the capability to go back and edit this. So in case you don't know how to use it, let me just go through it real quick. So to locate the offline map ability, go on maps, you tap on your profile and you'll see an offline map section right here. Here you could either search up the city you're looking for or manually move it around and download a certain area and it will calculate the storage space right here. But do you know to existing maps, if you like to crop things out and remove some data, you could actually go back and edit this. So if you like to make it bigger or smaller, you could totally do so. So you're always able to go back and resize it instead of having to delete it and do it all over again. Now a hidden gesture that Apple did integrated is the capability to freely zoom in and zoom out without using two fingers. You see, if you double tap on the display, after doing that, you can just use one finger to zoom in and zoom out the map. Apple thought about this in those situations when you're operating a vehicle or you're doing something that you just can't use two hands where you could easily zoom in and zoom out and see your route. Now there's a couple of ways to crop an image, but a lot of people didn't know about this, but when you actually zoom in, when you're looking through the image, there's a crop icon right here, allowing you to bypass the requirement to actually go into edit and then go into manually crop it this way. You can just do it here and skip that, saving you a lot of productivity time. Now real quick, as I know, I'm gonna be asked this a lot, what case am I using on my iPhone 15 Pro? It's this one from Bataka. This is not a sponsored video, I could talk smack about it, but I really do like this case, all due to the fact that it has nice raised lips on the side. The port down here, one of my biggest concerns is that sometimes I use a generic USB-C cable to charge my device. This port's always big enough, I never had issues where I had to take off my case to fast charge it. Or if I wanna use like a memory stick or something like that, it fits here just fine without me having to modify it or remove the case like some other cases I've had in the past. This is the reason why I like using this case and it also supports MagSafe and it's pretty strong. And the buttons are also extremely responsive. So I'll have this one linked in the description down below. Also the AirMed fiber feels really nice to the touch. Moving along. Now if you use a lot of AirTags like I do, you could actually share these to your friends, family, significant other, all right here on demand. This to me seems like an extremely easy forgotten feature because this was added recently. So yeah, 
As a quick refresher, you can share your air tags with other people so they don't get the notification that an air tag is following them. I like to personally use this with my significant others and our dogs. This way our dogs are able to be tracked from both of us. Now, if you ever changed the password to your iPhone, did you know it will actually save the previously used passcode? This way, if you accidentally forget your password the next day, you're not locked out of your device. But if you're trying to change your password from somebody that you know who's around your iPhone and you don't want them to still have access to your device, you can manually override it. Now, a personal favorite feature of mine can be located in Safari, and that is the ability to have Siri read the article for you. As we know, there's some article websites, like mainly news sites, that actually have a built-in native article reader. The only con with these is sometimes they're filled with ads. Bypass the ads by just using Siri, as Siri has this capability to do so, and it's very similar to podcasts. You can actually allow it to go faster as well, and you have other powerful tools here. So if you wear an Apple Watch, uh, I misplaced my Apple Watch before. You know, when you're changing clothing or getting up in the morning, you can locate it. You have the freedom to pin your Apple Watch in Control Center. Just make sure you add it in Control Center and rearrange it to your liking. And you can tap right here to pin your Apple Watch. So the calculator. The search spotlight search, you can do quick math here as well. But on the native calculator app, one of the most overlooked features is the capability to go back, like backspace. Instead of tapping C to clear all, you could actually just swipe and it will actually delete the wrong digit in case you enter a nine instead of a six or something like that. You could just do that instead of starting all over. Then if you use Apple CarPlay, you may be wondering how you could rearrange these apps. It's actually easy to do so as all you need to do is just go into your iPhone settings and go into general, select CarPlay, select the name of your vehicle, and then in here you have customized abilities. Not only can you rearrange the apps you're liking, you can move your most favorite ones to the front and your least used ones to the very last page, but you can also delete it in general if it just it's just an app that's just taking up space. So if you like a clean layout, you can totally just do that, or you can add the ones you want to see and the ones you don't want to see. And then a little pro tip, if you actually forget where you park, CarPlay is so advanced that as soon as you leave your vehicle and you launch your map app on your iPhone, you can see where you last parked your car. It keeps track the last time it was connected to your device. And if you forget, you can also have reach ability enabled on your iPhone. There's times when I'm personally like tired, exhausted. I'm just single handedly just operating my phone, but there's something on top and I really don't feel like readjusting my phone just to reach. I can just do this, it will lower the screen. I can tap on it and then raise it to go back. So if you like to enable this reachability feature, you'll find it in the accessibility tab on your iPhone and go into touch and down here, you'll see reach ability and just enable this. And there you go. And now you know a bunch of cool unknown features that your iPhones can do. Let me know in the comment section which one was your favorite or if you have something you'd like to share with for others to also know. Ask because of course, all we're trying to do is just educate ourselves and find out clever ways to use our devices. So if you have some you'd like to suggest to the community, feel free to comment. But of course, if you found one of these useful, you know, leave a like and get subscribed for more tech videos just like this. As I've done plenty of these and I still have plans to making more. So if you missed our previous one about the Apple Watch, check it out right over there. Thank you so much for watching.